Once you've learned to do a nice gothic calligraphy, there's absolutely no limit to the creative things you can do with it. Uh, things, nice art pieces that hang on the wall, name tags, wine bottles, place settings, again, and Google it, all kinds of ideas. I'm going to demonstrate just one for you, and that is putting a nice gothic capital on a piece of wood, something a little bit craftsy, artsy craftsy, if you will. And one of the characteristics of the Gothic calligraphy is that the capitals, the capital letters, are so ornate all by themselves that they really can very often stand alone. So that's what I'm going to do on this block of wood. We're going to put, I've decided, the letter R. And R stands for, help me out here, <laughs> Robert, Roberta, <laughs> retired. <laughs> Um, return. <laughs> I don't know what it stands for, but you know, you, you put your own letter on your own block of wood and well, I'll be happy. Let me show you a couple tricks. How do you, how do you do this? Well, you probably know this by now. You don't start scratching and scratching on your block of wood, right? You get one chance at that. It's kind of hard to erase and so forth. So we're going to use a number of, uh, artificial means of support to get the job done. The first thing I'm going to do is simply trace this block of wood onto a piece of graph paper. This is ordinary graph paper that you can get at any office supply store. There's nothing fancy about it at all, but simply because it has lines going both ways, it provides a really good way to, to do um, gothic lettering. Now, in, this letter is going to be large. We haven't done anything nearly this large up to this point. I want it to be about oh, three or four inches tall and almost that wide. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can just start, grab a ruler and start trying to imitate, you know, the Gothic, the Gothic font by drawing. And of course, because this is your scrap paper, you can draw and draw and erase and draw and erase and draw and erase till you've got what it looks like. I'm going to use a little bit faster technique than that. I have here a set of watercolors and it does, really doesn't matter what color I use. The color I'm using now is unrelated to the final product. It's, it allows me to use, oh, this is about a three-quarter inch wide brush. And because I'm a calligrapher, not a drawer, scratcher, pencil, ruler, scratcher, drawer kind of artist, I'm a calligrapher, then this allows me to do calligraphy, right? All the same strokes that you and I have been practicing from beginning to end. I, and I, by the way, strongly recommend playing around with a brush. Now, let me say this very quickly. Uh, you need to use a good brush. So a cheap brush that you buy at a craft store, you know, that costs $1.75 or even $5.75, probably will not do the job. You probably want a nice red sable, maybe a synthetic, but very likely a real sable brush to do this kind of work. And if, if I were doing real calligraphy, that is if my final product were being done with a brush, then it would be absolutely imperative that you get a high quality brush. And I say that not because I'm selling brushes, I say that because I've had good, long, hard experience trying to do nice lettering with cheap brushes and it can't be done. Well, I honestly, I, I'm, I, I was going to show how if this letter was off center that I would then move the border, but <laughs> by golly, it's centered. I promise just luck, pure luck. I guess I wasn't, I wasn't holding my breath assuming that I would manage. Now, I'm going to use this, this, the diamond. You know, I talked about on some of our letters, it's cool to have the, the diamond come below the baseline. I'm going to do that here. And I'm now fairly happy with that letter R. Now, that's not, I'm not a slave to it. That's just a guideline. Does that make sense? The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that this is dry. Yeah, that'll take just a minute. And then I'm going to make my own piece of carbon paper. Got it? But let me get this dry first. Okay, my piece of paper is dry, the watercolor ink is dry, 
And if you haven't seen this trick, you're going to enjoy this. Let me turn on my light table because, because it's here. Uh, I'm going to take a pencil and take a few minutes to scribble all across the back of this letter R. Now, if I had a piece of charcoal in my calligraphy kit, I would be doing this with charcoal, and it would be a little bit faster because the charcoal is fatter than the lead. But if you'll be patient here for a minute, we'll have it done just a jiffy. And I'll show you this really neat trick. This, this particular trick can be used in so many different kinds of art projects. By no means is it limited to calligraphy. You can use this with illustration, fine arts projects. Anytime that you want to trace a subject, trace an object onto a piece of clean paper, this is one way to do it. When I was a kid, there was such a thing as carbon paper. And I think it's still out there. <laughs> You'd have to search for it. I don't know if office supply stores still carry it or not, but before the age of the computer, it was quite a common uh, tool that people used. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is making our own carbon paper. I think that will do. Let's turn the light table off. Yeah, that looks pretty dark. Now, I'm going to carefully place this piece of paper and I'm going to cut it down just a little bit so I have something to, to tape to. Do you understand? I'm making the the <laughs> this is paper tearing 101. <laughs> I must have missed that day in kindergarten. And now I'm going to position the R, center it on that block of wood. And I think that's about it right there. I'm going to tape that down. You see now why I had to tear the paper, right? So I had so I could easily tape. <laughs> okay. And the next tool I'm going to use is the good old, you find them everywhere, uh, ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen honestly works the best for this because it gets a nice discreet line and it rolls over the paper instead of scraping over the paper. And at this point, you can make any corrections that you want to make. In other words, I did this R, as you saw, fairly quickly. And if there, if there are any things that I want to improve on it, which of course there are, you can always improve, it seems like, on every every stroke, every project. So I'm I'm not a slave to, in other words, I'm not tracing slavishly. I'm making little corrections as I go along. Does that make sense? That's what you do as an artist. You don't you don't turn off your brain and just start copying things. You use every opportunity to improve on things. And I'm going to use a ruler. There's no, no uh, particular virtue in doing this freehand. That's not what this is about. If we were a sign painter, if we were doing sign painting, if this were a DVD, oh my goodness, you bought the wrong DVD. <laughs> it's all about sign painting. <laughs> If this were a sign painting DVD, then of course it would be that would be a shame to use a ruler. But this that's not what this is, so no problem using a ruler at all. Making little corrections. Let me look here and make sure that it's actually transferring the way I want it to. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Okay. You'll see it in a minute. I got a sneak peek. Trust me, it's gonna work well. So now you're using your skill as a calligrapher. And actually, if there were a, another name for the craft we're doing right now besides sign painting, it would be this. It would be typography, which is designing type. I think you probably already know this, but all of the great typefaces, all the fonts that are in your computer, if they're a good font, they are they can be traced back to calligraphy. You can still see the, the rudimentary marks of calligraphy in those fonts. And type design is essentially 
calligraphy straightened out, as in straightened out with a ruler and straightened out with a computer and so forth. So simply by virtue of the fact that you are becoming a calligrapher, you are also, coincidentally, becoming a typographer. I'm not sure that's the right word, but <laughs> you're becoming a person who designs type. So that's exactly what we're doing with this project. We are turning ourselves now into type designers and designing a perfect letter R. Rulers are legal. Okay? Let's see now if that transferred to my piece of wood. Yes, there it did. Very nice. Do you see that? So now, without any muss and fuss and scribbling and erasing and so forth, I have a very nice letter R right there on my piece of wood. Now I'm going to grab a tool here that I haven't used yet, and that is a cotton glove. <laughs> well-used cotton glove that I've cut the fingers off all the fingers except the pinky because I want to be very careful not to get the oil from my hand onto this block of wood and now I'm going to trace it yet one more time I'm using here a felt tip pen fine point felt tip pen that is mostly waterproof and let me say again, here I am tracing it again, but I'm not tracing it slavishly. I am, not only am I free to make improvements, man, come on, I am a professional. You, I'm talking about you here. You are a professional. You make improvements with every, every time that you copy it. Does that make sense? So you don't just slavishly copy what you put down there. You make improvements. You say, oh, you know what, I feel like it'd be a little bit better if I moved this or that line over, just a, just a scrunch. I, evidently, that's my word <laughs> in, in uh, Gothic calligraphy is a scrunch. So you move it over just a little bit to make it look even better than it did the last time. Like I'm going to bring this down a little from what it was. And again, no shame in using a ruler uh, because we're... We've translated ourselves, in a sense, from calligraphers to the next logical step, which is type designers. But all these curves, I'm going to freehand. That'll be close enough. It's really fun to see one of our letters that we, we did freehand and that we worked out all the details. It's really fun to see it blown up. And I hope that let's, this is a gift, I am assuming, that we're making for someone. They're going to enjoy it so much. Between you and me, they will have no idea how much work really went into it. <laughs> That's our little secret. They won't know, but hopefully they will intuitively enjoy the beauty and the skill that you put into this craft project. directly related to your calligraphy career. Which is what it is now, right? It's just a little bit more than a hobby. It's now something that you do on a semi-professional level. It's starting to look good to you? I think it is. I'm making some, making some subtle changes up here. Making these curves just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. When I entered the world of illustration, oh, 35 years ago, um, French curves were, were literally a fairly regular part of my my repertoire my my equipment I still have all those French curves dozens of them and if in in years past letters like this if we were real typographers real type designers we'd be using French curves on every one of these curved lines 
But for this project, hand done is good enough. Now I need one more tool down here, which is an eraser. I have a kneaded eraser. And I want to come in and make sure that some of these pencil lines are now disappearing. Yeah, that's working very well. And yes, by the way, a kneaded eraser is is a part of my regular calligraphy kit, which is at my side down here on the floor where I'm getting all these tools from, is my calligraphy box. Woohoo! Fun? Let's just do a few other things really quickly and then we'll start coloring this. I'm going to put a border just inside the the edge of this box. And by the way, I'm demonstrating here, if you don't have one of these rulers that is transparent and has lines on it, you should pick one up. I'm demonstrating one of the, the benefits of it. I can get these lines perfectly lined up with the edge of the box just by using the lines on the ruler. They usually, by the way, just for what it's worth, they usually come 18 inches long. I cut mine off short so that it will fit, would fit in my calligraphy box. Now, let's think about some of the creative things we might want to do with this. Um, the first thing I'm sure that I want to do is, is do a shadow of this. And I have a pen here, a, a, a marker, that is perfect for that. But let's see what would happen if I start trying to do some watercolor on it and let's say I want for some reason I'm in the mood for a blue R. I have a little travel I have all kinds of watercolor kits at home this happens to be <laughs> the watercolor kit that I use for calligraphy so it fits in my fits in my kit and I'm simply gonna color in just like Third grade coloring book. I'm going to color in this R. It's not too hard. Uh, it's not too hard, let me say this again, if you have a high quality brush. Many of you, if you didn't, if you haven't been an artist, then you may not be accustomed to buying good brushes. You may not know exactly what a good brush is. Well, in a word, Pretty much any brush that's labeled Red Sable is probably a good brush. If you walk into any art supply store and tell the person behind the counter that you want a very good brush, they'll probably know exactly what you mean. It's not the kind that comes in a plastic package where you get 10 brushes for $10. Okay. You use those brushes for applying glue <laughs> and things like that but you don't use them necessarily for painting with. So, is that all right? Because I, I, I'm an artist, I, I've worked in the world of art so long, I, I maybe forget what what is normal to me may not be normal to other people. So this is a very good brush. And just to give you some idea, just some idea. So you have, it's about a quarter inch wide, it's a red sable, and it probably costs me I remember it's more than I thought. It was nearly $30. So again, you can groan if you want, but this brush, if I don't lose it, um, it will last me the rest of my life. And I've had, I've had good quality brushes that have lasted me for decades. So it's an investment in your calligraphy career. And it makes jobs like this so much easier because the brush behaves itself and does what you tell it to do. Whereas if you buy a cheap brush, it's always messing up, not doing what you tell it to do. They're nearly finished. Isn't that fun? It's calligraphy on a grand scale. I hope it's kind of fun to you to see, you know, you were there when we did the letter R, right? And it's kind of fun to see all the principles, all the lines of the letter that we worked on so hard, drawn out large and made 
perfected a little bit. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to do to this on camera, after you guys go away, I'll finish it. <laughs> Give it to my friend, uh, Ron. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do on camera is grab another marker. It's a fairly wide calligraphy marker. And I think I can freehand this part. I'm going to create a shadow down and to the left of this letter, leaving a little gap in between. So really, at this point, I am employing some of my calligraphic skills, doing something freehand. Now, one of the things I wonder about is how much will this ink bleed in this wood? And it is bleeding a little bit. I'm just going to let that be part of the charm of this project. So they could tell that it was done by hand, if you will. could use a ruler for this, but I just want to sort of want to knock it out fairly quickly so that you can see the whole process. As I'm doing this, there are a number of things that come to mind like th that could make this uh, quite a bit more uh, extravagant or innate than it is. One would be to buy little fake jewels, little glass jewels, place them carefully on the letter R at certain intersections. Uh, another, another would be to buy some gold paint and very carefully uh, do some, some lines inside the red inside the blue have <laughs> gone colorblind all of a sudden. Uh, another thing would be to, to take white paint, opaque white, and uh, perhaps paint like the, uh, above and to the right of the letter R. Can you imagine that? But that's a lot of fun. At least I think it's a lot of fun. Now, one thing I want to mention about this, because that's watercolor sitting on this wood, after this dries, you absolutely will want to spray it with probably a plastic coating so that people can use it and it won't rub off. Well, that's just one of the crazy creative things that you can do with your new calligraphic skills. Man, have fun, have fun. Did I say that yet? <laughs> have fun. Thanks for watching. <laughs>